Hey guys, welcome back to Office 365 Concepts. This is the third video of this entire series where we are talking about SharePoint Online. If you're watching this series from the beginning, we have discussed what is SharePoint Online, what are the features and benefits provided by SharePoint Online, where we can use SharePoint. We talked about the difference between SharePoint Server and SharePoint Online, and we talked about the difference between a team site and a communication site. In this particular video, we will learn how to create a team site in SharePoint Online. This is going to be a step-by-step -step demo where we will learn how to specify the site properties. We will add owners and members within a site, and we will talk about the background process, what happens when we create a team site. To create a SharePoint site, you will go to SharePoint Online. First, you will log into portal.office.com. You will click App Launcher, and from here, you will click SharePoint. There are multiple ways to create a SharePoint site. You can either click Create Site, or on the left, you can click plus icon, which is for Create, and then click Site. When you create a site, you will be asked if you want to create a team site or a communication site. If you want to know the difference between team site and communication site, you can refer to the video that you can see on your screen. You can also find the link within the description of this video. In this example, I'm going to create a site for my IT department. So this is going to be a dedicated space for IT department where they can upload files, they can upload documents, and they can collaborate with each other. So that means we need a team site. So let's click team site. Under select a template, we have pre-built site templates that can be used to create a SharePoint site. These are the templates, those are provided by Microsoft. And if your organization has uploaded these site templates, you can find them under from your organization. So let's select a template and click use template. Under site name, we will give a name for this site. For example, we are going to create this site for the IT department. So I will give this a name, IT. Now here you can see it says this site name is available. That means every SharePoint site name should be unique. You cannot create multiple sites with the same name. And as soon as you will type a name for the SharePoint site, it will assign an email address to Microsoft 365 group that will be associated with this particular site. All the members and owners that you add within the site are added within that Microsoft 365 group. This group gives you a mailbox and a shared calendar. All the users who are members and owners of this site will have access to Microsoft 365 group of this site. We will discuss this in detail in upcoming videos. If you want to change the email address for this group, you can type another email address prefix here. For example, IT department. Now you might be thinking, we can only see the email address prefix here, but we do not see the domain for this email address. So the answer is, the domain that is selected as default in your tenant will be used as email address suffix. For example, let's go to Microsoft 365 Admin Center, go to Settings, domains now here you can see this domain is selected as default in my tenant so if i create a sharepoint site the microsoft 365 group for that site will use this domain for the email address even if you create a user or a group by default this domain will be used for their email addresses let's go back to sharepoint online under site description we can add a description for this particular site for example this site is for IT department. Under site address, you can see the complete URL for this particular site. Office 365 Concepts is the name of my Office 365 tenant or the M365 organization name. SharePoint.com means this is a SharePoint site and sites is the root site folder where all these sites are created and IT department is the name of this site. If you change the name of this site, for example, I remove department, 
Now the complete URL will remain same. The only site name will change. So once you have made the changes as per your requirement, click next. Under privacy settings, you can select if you want to create a public site or a private site. A public site is open for everyone. That means any user within your organization can access this site. But if you want that only the members of this site should access it, then you can select private. I will select private because I'm going to create this site for a particular department. Under language, you can select the language in which you want to create this site. But remember one thing, once you select a language and you create this site, you cannot change the language later. So let's select English and click create site. Under add members, we will add the members or owners for this particular site. Let me add a couple of owners and members. So I have added few members, but let's say I want to add this particular user as owner. So I will click this drop down arrow and I'll select honor. And now this particular user will become the owner of this particular site. The difference between honor and member of site is the owners will have full control on this site. They can upload documents. They can modify the site content. They can manage permissions and so on. But the members of this site can edit and view the site content. They can upload files and they can modify the pages and the site list because this site will also create an associated Microsoft 365 group. These permissions will also be visible in that group. So once you add honors and permissions, click finish. So the team site is ready. If you look at the URL of this site, Office 365 Concepts is the name of my tenant. SharePoint.com means this site is a SharePoint site. This site is created under sites root folder and IT is the name of this particular site. At the right, we can see this is a private group. That means this team site is a private site and the M365 group that is associated with this particular site is a private group. Next to this, you can see I am following this site. If you follow a site, this site is added under following tab. For example, I'm following this site and if I go to home page of SharePoint online under following, I can see this particular site so I can easily locate a site and if I want, I can simply open it from here. Next to this, we can see the members of this particular site. If you click members, you can see group membership. You can see how many members and owners are added in this site. So this membership is coming from the M365 group that was created along with this site. Now let's go to Microsoft 365 Admin Center and expand teams and groups and go to active teams and groups. And under teams and Microsoft 365 groups, we can see the IT group that was created along with the team site. Let's open this group. Under site info, we can see the address of the site that is associated with this particular group. If I click on this site, I will be redirected to the team site. Under email address, we can see the email address which is assigned to this particular group. And let's go to membership. We can see the same membership like we can see within the SharePoint site. Concepts user is the owner. Concepts user is under honors and rest of the users are members of this particular site and the group. Now as a user, you can only add honors and members in a site. If you want to add the site visitors, that is a read only permission, only an administrator can do it. If you want to add site visitors, click site visitors and then go to add site visitors and here you can search for the name of the user and you can add the site visitor. Now this account with which I'm logged in, this is a global admin account. That is the reason I'm able to add it. Under settings tab, we can see the privacy of this particular group. When we created this site, we selected private. But if you want to make it a public site, you can select public and then click save. So that is all for now. If you learned something new from this particular video, please give it a thumbs up 
subscribe to our channel and if you have questions or suggestions feel free to write them in the comments below thanks for watching i'll see you in the next video